The Foundry includes a 16-step sequencer that's independent per voice, which means that any one voice can have a completely different step sequence happening at the same time as any other voice. Let's take a look a little bit about what the sequencer can do within the Foundry. So on the performance page, you can turn on and off the sequencers individually, and then you can also go into each voice tab here and press the very first tab, which is the sequencer tab. The sequencer tab allows you to turn on and off each individual steps, set the, set the step value in semitones, the octave switch, pan, gate, and stutter control, velocity, and then glide legato functionality. There's also the power button, what mode you're operating in, the direction in which the sequencer will run, the number of steps the sequencer can use up to 16, the value of each step, a general shuffle knob, and our overall randomizing button for the sequencer page. Our step sequencer has three main modes, melodic, arpeggio, and rhythmic. The melodic mode is used for the traditional step sequencer approach, such as creating minimalistic phrases and other time interval based music programming. This mode is used both monophonically and polyphonically. The arpeggio mode plays back monophonically based upon the chords that you play. Rhythmic mode, however, will operate a lot like the melodic mode, but the way it populates each step using the randomization engine has a completely different algorithm than that of the melodic mode. This rhythmic mode is used to create loops as well as tickies and other rhythmic elements. So the rhythmic mode's randomization algorithm will populate steps based upon strong beats and weak beats, while the melodic mode will populate steps based more on interval relationships. One thing to note, the foundry is always looking for a tempo. And in order to find a tempo and lock to a tempo, it's waiting for beats. So if you play a note to trigger a sequence, and it's right on the beat, it will play the next beat value. So if your step values are set to eighth notes, if you play right on the beat, it may trigger one eighth note later. In order to compensate for this, we recommend going into your DAW like this and just dragging back the notes just slightly before the downbeat, so that way everything is tempo synced. Another way you can do this is just by setting a simple offset value within your DAW. So let's take a first look here at one of these synths. So this is just a simple uh, chorus triangle wave that we have that I was using. So this is melodic mode. Melodic mode allows me to play polyphonic as well as generate a sequence to where I can just play one note and be able to play back um, the step values. So let's generate a random sequence. So right now we have each of these steps active, which means that any of the unactive steps are not going to actually be played through. I can turn on and off all of these if I want individually, or by holding down the shift function, I can turn all on at once or all off at once. So let me go back and just kind of simply turn these back on. How this works is I press a root note, in this case C, and it's going to play back that each step based upon that root note that I play. So if I played a G, it's going to play five semitones down plus an octave on the very next active step. Now say I don't want that step there. Maybe I wanted this to be a, um, a minor third, which is three semitones above. I can hold down the shift function and press E flat, which will allow me to play so change the root note as well, or the octave note as well. To reiterate, I can also trigger back just that value just by pressing the listen function. And I can hear what that note is relative to the root note that I play. And again, if I don't like a specific step value, I can just shift click to change it.
The listen value will only change the step value, not the actual octave. I can manually change each step value if I want by just clicking and dragging, as well as holding down the shift function will give me finer control. I can span the range of negative three octaves and positive three octaves from each step. The pan as well can also be shift clicked. If I want to set a pan value, I can set it all to mono and click it. And now all of my steps are coming through the center channel. But say I wanted these two steps to be left, right, these two steps to be left, right, and that one to be center again. Now I get the same with gate functionality, which is similar to that of a decay or um, shortness factor. So now these will be much shorter. Make them much longer. And I can also glitch or stutter each of the step by pressing this little side icon here. And this grants me a stutter functionality. The stutter goes from fast, medium, and slow stutter. So here's the difference between that. And then we have velocity. Let me shift click here to set all the velocity values. This allows me to change the actual volume of each individual step. Then I also have glide functionality. The way the glide function works is it'll play the step as is and then glide into the next note or legato into the next note. So you'll hear these two steps will glide from the A flat to the E flat. I'm sorry. So these steps will glide from the low G up to the E flat. Again, I can turn all these on and all of them off at the same time just by holding down the shift function. We also have directional modes. So now it's going to play backwards. So if I play, it'll play some no steps at once. I'll have bi-directional, so it'll play this way through. And then it'll play backwards. Then I also have random functionality, where I'll just randomly choose steps to play back. You can also change the number of steps. So if I wanted something, say, in 6-8, uh, I could change this to just have six steps. seven steps, but that sounded cool. Six steps. I can change how fast this plays back. On the step value. I can change the shuffle of it. So it gives it a little bit more of a swing feel or I can have it be a little much more straight. The arpeggio mode is a little bit different than the melodic mode. So with the melodic mode, I was able to play polyphonically, playing multiple notes at once, and it'll track each note that I play and move it. The arpeggio mode actually listens to the chord that I play and will populate each of these steps with what chord I play.
The next mode is the rhythmic mode. This mode is made primarily for the rhythmic patches. In this case, I have an acoustic snare and kick laid out. If you listen to the AARE guide, I mentioned that C's and F's have more of the strong beat to them. That would be kicks or just harder hits. When I randomize this step value, it will put strong beats on C's or F's based upon a C root note. Whereas if I played an E flat, it'll give me a little bit more of those weaker beats or more of the color uh, tones on the kits. And that's the primary difference between the rhythmic mode, arpeggio mode, and melodic mode. Now, if you notice when I played back this original kit, the very first sound, I had set a specific sound to a key range. Let me go back to that initial sound. I set a key range so when I played the C, it played that bright shaker back, but plays all these other ones because they're part of the XY pad. I could always set them to always on as well. go ahead and reset this all back. I can use my template mode to reinitialize each individual patch if I want. You can also set it to 6 eighth notes or, or um, off beats or on beats. So the sequencer is a lot of fun. And just a quick side note, in the settings page, you can change that mono glide time. So on each of these glide steps, you can change how fast the value is between steps by changing this knob. Keep in mind, if you turn down this value to speed up the steps, it causes a lot of processing on the CPU. So we recommend keeping it between the 12 and three o'clock positions for optimum performance. In a future version of Foundry, we hope to keep this a little bit more efficient as you decrease the mono glide time. Thank you for watching this guide. Be sure to check out the other guides on our YouTube page, including the performance page, voice tabs, settings, and of course our AARE randomizing engine.